Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power by Come On Down the Podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and this is Rudy's Rant, where we practice facts over feelings. I'm telling you folks right now, he will not be there in 2025. He will not be there. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Deion Sanders. He will not be there. Where am I talking about? Colorado. Let that sink in for a second. But before we jump in, let me thank you all for continuing to support our channel. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to hit that like button. Ring that bell, share these videos, and go on over to Rudy's Rant as well and subscribe there. Become a member of our channel. We really appreciate it. Let's And check out our merch line. We're coming out with merch. Got merch for my Unstoppable, Unstoppable Lifestyle brand as well as we'll have Rudy's Rant merch coming out as well as come on now, the podcast merch dropping soon. I got to give credit where credit is due. Deion Sanders has done an absolutely fantastic job this year. I know it, people will tell – I mean, I – He's done a fantastic job. Their team is playing well. Their team it looks good. Um, do I think they're a top 15 team in the country? No, but they are far exceeding my expectations. I, I said beginning of the year, they'd be lucky to win six games. I picked them to go four and eight. I do think early on getting those wins over North Dakota State and um, who was the other one? UCF were huge confidence boosters for them. You know, even the Kansas State game that they lost was a confidence booster for them. And then their last couple of games where they they, they beat the hell out of Arizona. And most recently, um, who was the team they played before? Texas Tech. Tech the Texas Tech game was the Baylor, you know, back it up. That Baylor game may have turned their season. The Baylor game where they won on a, uh, where they got that Hail Mary and then won in overtime. That game probably turned their season because that game would have been the difference of them being, I think it was three and one instead of two and two at the time. And you, you might say I'm, you might say it doesn't mean anything, but those types of wins they matter so much. They change the traject the, the trajectory of your season. I mean that would yeah that that game would have made them two and two with losses to Nebraska and Baylor going into UCF. Instead, they go into UCF confident, and they blew UCF out of the building on the road. Now, UCF has turned out to be not very good, but it doesn't matter. At the time, UCF was 3-0, and and they thought they were good, and they believed they were good. So it doesn't matter what they were. Colorado made them believe they're not very good after they whooped their ass. <clears throat> now they come back and they lose to Kansas State. But they fought in that game. They got back in the game. The game that they were getting pretty much beat down in. <clears throat> so they're they they have they have overcome some things this year. The Arizona win, the Cincinnati win was a good win for them. The Texas Tech win this past week, and they're down 10 0, down 13, 10 at the break. Big win for them because Texas Tech is coming off a of win over Ohio, Iowa State. Season's not over. They got three left. They got Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. And if you ask me, I would tell you right now, if they don't go, like I said a couple weeks back. If they're not 10 into it at the end of this regular season, I would be surprised. And the fact that now Kansas State lost and Iowa State lost again, Kansas State needs Colorado to lose to get themselves back in the Big 12 championship game. And now Colorado is in the driver's seat to face BYU for the Big 12 championship. I would have never thought that. So I got to give that man credit. I got to give him credit. I don't like how he does certain things, but credit is credit. They have a much better team than I thought. Still don't run the ball very much, but they have an electric an electric offense in terms of passing the ball. You got weapons everywhere, and, and their defense has done a fairly good job. I, I, I you got it. I mean, twenty nine sacks in nine games. That's almost four sacks a game. It's three and a half sacks a game. So they're doing some work over there in Colorado. So all credit to them. But he won't be back next year. This is my opinion. I can't speak it as fact. But this is my hot take. He will not be back next year. Why do I say this? I say this because he's doing too well. 
because he's doing too well in year two, he can he has made himself a commodity. He's going to get phone calls for coaching jobs. And I think there's two coaching jobs that would not potentially three, but I think two more than anything. When you include the fact that his son has pretty much told everyone he's turning pro because he said classes, like he was recently asked about when he registering for classes in the spring. He's like, classes, I won't be in class. I'm going to be getting ready for the draft. Like, I'm not playing. I'm not going back to school. I'm not going. He's not going back to school. He's, he's done, right? And when you consider the fact that Shador is going to be gone, Travis Hunter is gone, Shiloh Sanders, who I don't think is a pro, but he's gone. And there might there might be other guys that are gone, but namely Shador and Travis more than anything. And the fact that Shiloh's got no eligibility eligibility left. What reason does Deion Sanders have to stay at Colorado? None. There's nothing keeping him there anymore. Nothing. And while I will say this, if he stays, I would be shocked. It would also not surprise me if there are teams, one in particular, the Dallas Cowboys, who I said last year would find a way to draft Shador Sanders and hire Dion as a coordinator or as a, a coach on the staff. You know what? He might be hired as the head coach at this point. Jerry Jones likes to make a thing. He likes to have the headlines. He likes all that drama. He loves that hysteria and chaos around his team, which is why he's always talking and can't ever shut his own mouth. But you have problems now with Dak Prescott on his bloated contract, and now he's out for the year or whatever it is. He's, I think he's out for the year from what I've read. <clears throat> I, it would, and, and the things that have been saying, yeah, he's out for the year with a surgery on his hamstring. You just gave him a bloated ass contract and he can't play. And now you have Micah Parsons talking shit about Mike McCarthy. It, it, it wouldn't shock me. Now, the more realistic possibility is LSU. LSU. LSU is one that I think is even more realistic, and here's why. Brian Kelly can't win a big game. I think Brian Kelly's a good coach. He's won everywhere he's gone. See, people people equate winning to winning a championship. Like, that's not real. There's only one national champion per year, and if you want to be honest about the national champions, over the last 24 years, let's go back to 2000, most of them have come out of the SEC. Most of them. So if you want to go back and look at it, 2000, Oklahoma. They weren't in the SEC then, but they are now. Miami, Ohio State, LSU and Southern Cal USC split. Then USC, Texas, not in the big, big SEC then, but they are now. Florida. So let's count the teams that are in the SEC right now. Oklahoma, LSU, Texas, Florida, LSU, Florida, Alabama, Auburn, Alabama, Alabama, Florida State, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, LSU, Alabama, Georgia, and Georgia. Of the 24 national champions crowned since 2000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of them are out of the SEC, the current SEC. If you exclude Texas and Oklahoma, 14 of the last 24 national champions are in the SEC. In fact, Three of them are out of LSU. So the fact that Brian Kelly can't win a big game at LSU pisses those fans off. It pisses them off. 
because you can't get beat by 30 at home at night against Alabama and keep your job. They have the money to get rid of you. They have the money to buy you out and send you packing and hire somebody else. But again, Brian Kelly, I think, is a good coach. He's won at Notre Dame. He won at Cincinnati. He wins. He just hasn't won the big game. He hasn't. He's lost. I mean, he got completely blown out in the national championship when he was at Notre Dame. Like, even if you go back to when he was coaching Grand Valley State, nine and three, eight and three, six, three and two, eight and four, eight and three, eight and three, nine and two, nine and three. Then you go, um, then became, they went from, that was one conference, and they went to another conference, and it's five and five, seven and four, 13 and one. He lost the Division II National Championship, 14 and 0, 14 and one. He won the Division II National Championship twice. Then he goes to Central Michigan, four and seven, six and five, nine and four. He improved that program, went to a bowl game his last year. Goes to Cincinnati, goes one and 0, 10 and three, 11 and three, 12 and 0. Wins the Sugar Bowl, finishes fourth in the country, undefeated. Then goes to Notre Dame, eight and five, eight and five. They went to the national championship game, but it, the, the game was va- it was vacated. I guess they had some probation stuff. Who the hell knows? I'm not 100 percent knowledgeable about that. Eight and five, ten and three. They had one bad year at four and eight, ten and three, twelve and one, eleven and two. Like they, he had good teams. They won games. He was, and then he went ten and two in the ACC in a year, and then he went eleven and one in in. Uh, and went to the Fiesta Bowl in 2021. That's before he comes over to LSU. Man was 92 and 39 in, at Notre Dame. He was 34 and six at Cincinnati, 118 and 35 and two at Grand Valley State. Like the man wins, but at LSU, winning, going 10 and two and 11 and nine and three and 10 and four, that's just not good enough. Going to the Citrus Bowl, going to the Reality Reality Quest. Really a quest bowl, finishing 12th and 15th and 6th. That doesn't work for people at LSU. It just doesn't. So what does that mean for LSU? There's rumor revealed that he might be on the outs at the end of the year. Who else would you want to re- replace him with? Who would be my, I mean, I'm, I'm not even a Dion fan, but I have to acknowledge what the man's doing at Colorado. I got to acknowledge it. And this is now a place in which people actually want to play. No one wants to go to Co- <laughs> Nobody wants to go to Colorado. The only reason they're going is for Dion. Those who are going. And I think at the same time, LSU would be a program that he could actually develop players the right way. He can actually recruit high school athletes to develop actual talent. That will last over the uh, over a period of years. This is my opinion. I don't think Dion will be back in Colorado next year. If one of these jobs is offered to him, he's gone. For one, the money he's making in Colorado, it will increase by 50% at LSU at a bare minimum. Maybe 100%. Maybe his number goes from 5 million to 10. Let's be real. Who's turning down a double in salary to go play in Baton Rouge over Boulder, Colorado? With all respect to Colorado, they're a meaningless program over the last decade or longer. For I mean, they've been a while. It's been a while. I think it will. Dis- I think it will depress many people who have created podcasts. Because they're at Colorado and the Matt McChesney's of the world who have a podcast largely because of the Dion show up there. He might move to LSU and Baton Rouge and cover the LSU Tigers if that happened. But I don't think Dion sticks around. I cannot pop. With the way things are looking at LSU, they're six and three now. They've got games left against. Florida, Vandy, and Oklahoma, they could realistically go seven and four, seven and five. They're eight, six and three, eight and four. 
I can see them losing one of those final three games. I can see, I can absolutely see it. Vanderbilt's better than we've thought. Oklahoma's still going to be a decent team. And LSU has proven that they're not that damn good. Back to back blowout losses against Texas A&M and Alabama. Their Ole Miss win looks way better than it looked even a few weeks ago. But outside of that, they lost to USC. They have a win over Nichols State, which isn't all that impressive, 44-21. The South Carolina win looks decent now. UCLA means nothing. South Alabama means nothing. Arkansas means nothing. So I'm going to tell you this right now. Deion Sanders is going to be the coach at LSU next year. That's my opinion. And I, I and and he will and I will tell you this as well. He will build himself one hell of a program there. Uh, people like him, young kids like him. Kids like him. Kid, kids love that swag, that braggadocio shit. They love it. And LSU is in the SEC, and LSU's got three national championships over the last twenty-four years. They expect to win. They expect 11-win seasons all the time. And now with the college football playoff, Dion would be in the playoffs going 10-2. and two. It doesn't matter about going 12-0 and 0 anymore, 13-0. and 0. It doesn't, That doesn't mean shit. Going 10-2 and 2 in the SEC because of the bias of that conference will get you, at LSU no less, will get you in the college football playoff pretty much every single year. And then you know what? Now it's go out there and play, and you can actually win a national championship and finish your season at 13-2 and and win a national championship. Where in the past, the idea of a two-loss team winning a national championship was very, very unlikely, although LSU did do that. I think it was under Nick Saban. The first national championship in, in the last 20. I don't know if that was their first t- title or not, but the one that they won under Saban, I think they were 12 and 2 that year, if I'm not mistaken. But if I am, I am, I know they had one championship in which they were 12 and 2. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's my thought. My belief is that Brian Kelly will be gone at the end of this season. They will buy his ass out and they will be calling Deion Sanders. They will offer him a Brinks truck to come to Baton Rouge. If Dallas doesn't happen first, I don't know that Dion is the is a great solution for a head coach in the NFL just because of how he how he is. But for college players, they like it. They like it, and players want to play for him. But players don't want to go to Colorado. So the fact that he's seven and two this year, potentially can finish ten and two. I mean, for Christ's sakes. They could, they could be in the college football playoff. If they went out, they're in the college football playoff. That means they have to beat BYU in the, in, in the Big 12 championship game. But there's not many people, even the people that said it's possible, they didn't believe that. Everything's possible. Was it probable? No. It's possible that I can dunk a basketball off a ladder. It's also possible I might break my ankle coming down. But it's also, I would say it's probable that I would break my ankle coming down. So, yeah, it was possible. Anything's possible. But the probability of Colorado in the playoffs, the biggest Colorado supporters would never have believed that. The biggest supporters would never have believed that. Now, I don't think they're better than any team in the top 12 right now. But it doesn't matter. It matters what happens once you get there. If you get there and you have a three-game hot streak where your defense loads up and your your offense is humming, you could be a national champion. I'm not getting ahead of myself saying they're going to win the national championship. I don't believe that's going to happen. But because I think the Big 12 is still very, very weak, it doesn't matter. They they have a legitimate chance to play for a, a college football playoff spot right now. Now, they can't lose. They cannot lose another game. But I have a feeling that I, I I just don't see Dion going back to Colorado with his kids gone, with Travis gone. I just don't see it. I see this man gonna I see him ending up at LSU. If he shocks me, I'll come out here and say I'm shocked. Because I 
It was the same thing at Jackson State. He was never leaving Jackson State, and then three years in, he's gone. He made himself a commodity really fast with this season. This season has made him a legitimate commodity for high major Division I football programs. And I'll tell you this. There's one other spot that could be a possibility, and that's if Florida State is going to eat the bank and buy Mike Norvell out. To go 13-0 last year, I'm ignoring the freaking bowl game because that was irrelevant. To go 13-0 and followed up with 1-9, FSU is going to go 2-10 at best because they're going to lose to Florida. The question is, are they going to lose to Charleston Southern? If they lose to Charleston Southern, he might not see the Florida game. He fired three coaches. That's what head coaches do when they're losing badly. They fire everybody because you know who the last person to go is? The head coach. If FSU is willing to eat that nut and, and, and pay Dion, he might end up in Tallahassee. That's a possibility. Although the way things went down with him and he's like, actually, he's not an FSU guy anymore. We shall see, but I don't think he's in Colorado next year. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on that. I would love to hear what your opinions are of Deion Sanders. You know, again, credit to him. He's doing a great, great job this year. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, pound that like button, ring that bell. Hit on over to Rudy's Rant. Subscribe there too. Become a member of this channel. Appreciate y'all. Back to our feelings. Come on now.